TikTok is a weird place. There's French toast talk, baby duck talk, politics talk, and even gynecology talk. I'm Mom and Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN a month for. Today, we're going through some of my favorite gynecology TikToks for learning and laughing. If you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Let's jump into the video. <laughs> Sexism does have a role in most of those things. And I definitely agree. This is still very much a problem. When I was pregnant with my last baby, I was actually told by a male physician colleague who was an obstetrician that he only took two weeks of leave when he had his prostate removed. So he didn't understand why I wanted to take eight or 10 weeks after birthing an actual human. I asked him if he stayed up at night, breastfeeding his prostate, making sure it was okay, checking on it to make sure it hadn't stopped breathing. And he said no. So I went ahead and took my maternity leave. I do want to talk about the birth control for men thing. This is actually a little more complex than it is often made out to be. It's often presented as they do a study and the men in the study are like, oh, I have a headache, my back hurts, this makes me feel bad. So they pull it and they stop it and they don't release it to the market. However, it's not quite that simple. When the FDA is deciding if they can approve a medication, they're looking at risks of being off the medication and risks of being on the medication. There is some room to say that we need to change this process in regards to what we're discussing right now. But the way it's currently done is that if you're looking at birth control for people who can become pregnant, the risk of not being on it is pregnancy and all the risks that come along with that. So when they're looking at male birth control, you're looking at the risk that this person being off birth control can get someone pregnant. And of course, that's the goal is them to not be able to do that. But the actual risk to the person taking the medication is minimal if they're not taking it. So the weighing of side effects is different because the outcome of being on or off the medication is different. So I hope that makes sense. I still think it's wildly bizarre and not the correct way to look at this particular topic. But this one is not just, oh, the men were so poorly accommodating to the side effects. It, it is a little bit deeper than that. What was that? Hmm? What was that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to know. I mean, it really could be anything. I mean, it feels like we just started. I don't know, you might have. You're gonna make me go check, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. That is the most accurate representation of a conversation that I think every person who has periods has ever had with their body. Hi, how are you doing? Have any questions? No? Okay, good. Okay, lay back. Let's measure your belly. Oh, perfect measure. Measuring just on time. Let's get that heartbeat. Me, 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 me. Okay, good. She's perfect. All right. Have any questions again? No? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we'll see you on your next appointment. Bye. That's a really accurate representation of anybody going to a prenatal appointment who was lucky enough to have a very straightforward and uncomplicated pregnancy. I often feel bad at the end of that conversation because I'm not sure what else to do when you're healthy and you don't have any concerns or complaints. A lot of times the visits can be that easy. It's just how it happens. Hello, um, I'm gonna need everyone to go to the OBGYN immediately and I don't like to give advice, but I'll give it um, because you don't know what's going on up there. I stopped in on the way to work two days ago um, because I woke up and my boyfriend's dog Fluff, uh, who he thinks is a sweetheart, was licking me in an inappropriate place. So now my biggest enemy is named Fluff and we don't make eye contact and it's hard to be mad at a dog because people think you're mean. Anyway, I stop in the, uh, the clinic about two days ago on the way to work and they say, we don't do walk-ins. And I go, I'll walk right in because we have a situation and I just think I have an infection probably. So all of a sudden I'm in there, doctor's putting her gloves on. She goes up there and she goes, something's in here. And I go, I don't really care for the small talk unless there, you found a baby in there. What's going on? She pulls out a soggy piece of paper. I go, did you lose a tool up there? She goes, I don't, none of my tools are paper. So then it's actually a note. She starts reading it. I go, pass it here. Um, and I can barely read the writing because it's been up there for about 43 years, um, my age. And uh, it is from my birth mom. It goes, from your birth mom, I didn't want to give you up, but I didn't have the funds for twins. I kept your sister. We're going to need you to come to Texas. We miss you. Luckily, I have miles. So I fly to Texas. 
and she only said her name was Mary, so it took a long time to find her. Lots of Marys. I met one enemy, one close friend. I end up finding her house, and she's passed. She passed away, but she left gold for me in the backyard. There was another note on the doorknob, so I'm digging for gold in the backyard. Her neighbor comes out with shotgun. He goes, get out of this yard. Our friend died. I go, this is my mom. Let me get the pussy note that I found. My OBGYN found it, I promise. Um, and I showed him and the point is just go to the doctor because you could have an STD, you could be pregnant or you could have a note from a loved one. That was the longest, obviously very true story that I have ever listened to on TikTok. And honestly, the only notes that I've ever found in there have been people looking to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. And I just usually throw those away. So you're welcome. You know, whenever my desire to the patriarchy into the ground gets a little defeated. I always remind myself that the placebo pill in singular phase women's birth control is not medically necessary, that it was put there to appease the Catholic Church because they deemed it unnatural for women not to have periods. Even though it's been medically proven that for this type of birth control, it's more healthy for women to stay on a plateaued regimen. I didn't know that that was the reason. At the time that it was probably decided, we didn't know whether it was safe to take pills continuously or not. But it is accurate that you don't have to take the placebo pills. You can skip them and just keep going straight into new pack and not have bleeding every month. The downside to this is at some point you probably will have breakthrough bleeding or irregular bleeding. And I tell my patients to go by the rule of threes. If you've had three days of bothersome bleeding, Look back on your calendar, make sure it has been at least three weeks with no missed pills, no placebo pills, a normal hormonal pill every single day. And if it has, then take a three day break to have a period and restart your pills. That's the way I have my patients manage breakthrough bleeding on continuous pills. Obviously there's a whole bunch of ways that people do this. I don't know that I would say it's better to be on continuous pills. I think it's better for some people. Some people like to have a period every month. It's just they're normal and they want to do that. And some people don't. I prefer continuous pills. I take birth control pills and I like to take them continuously. Some people have too much breakthrough bleeding. It drives them nuts. It's very individual. I don't think it's healthier or unhealthier to be on pills continuously or not continuously. Her story about how they got put there is interesting. Can't confirm or deny whether that is true, but it is true that it is medically safe for most people to take birth control pills continuously if they prefer them. When doing a vaginal exam, why should you be careful sitting in a rolly chair like this? An awkward young med student prepares his speculum and leans forward to insert it into the middle-aged patient when all of a sudden the rolly chair flies out from behind him and he goes back maskless, face first, into her JJ. No! Comment with what you would say in this situation and follow for more. I really hope that is not a true story. And if it is, I am so sorry to whatever patient experienced that and also to whatever attending was standing there watching it happen. Med students, surely you can use a rolly chair better than that. This is a horrifying story and I hope it's not real. <gasps> it's finally time. Ashley started her first period. Well, we kind of have a problem. Do you not see that? I I can't freely bleed. She hasn't found out about you, has she? No. She just knows that there's one uterus, not two. That means she doesn't know about our friend Kidney up there either. I am so tired of filtering the salt and the coke out of this little girl's body. She needs to stop drinking like there's two of us. There's only one. I don't know what to do with this period blood. It's just sitting here. We could always give her severe cramps and then maybe her mom will take her to the doctor. No, genius. She has a toxic mother. Her mom's not gonna listen to her. You're just gonna make her suffer. We have to do something. I mean, I can't just sit here drenched in my own blood. Maybe kidney could do something. Like what? Try to kill this girl, put her into kidney failure where she belongs with all of this Coca-Cola drinking? You think they're going to look at her uterus for that? No. I know what to do. <coughs> what are you doing? <coughs> I'm just going to dilate till it comes out. So I'll pass it like a baby. <coughs> Ashley, I'm so sorry. <coughs> it's not working. What is going on down there? Um, I don't know, but she just took three ibuprofens. Kidney, you better have something in plan. <sighs> I hate my life. 
that's it. I've had four months of this pain. We are telling her mom. Good luck. I have dilated a full 10 centimeters. And that blood is still there. I think this ibuprofen is killing me. Guys, I have good news. Her mom is taking her to the doctor. Thank God. You're talking. I'm halfway shriveled now. That's cool. All right, y'all, here's the plan. Ashley finally figured out about her two uteruses and her one kidney. She's gonna get a part removed out of her uterus to remove that blockage that's holding that blood in, causing hers to dilate. She's what? I didn't know TikToks could be that long, but what this is describing is the process of someone finding out that they have a condition called uterine didelphus or duplicated uterus. Now, what they're discussing here is basically in embryology, when you are growing from a tiny, tiny little zygote and embryo and forming all of your organs, you have two sides of the development of the uterus that come together, they grow together, and they eventually dissolve to become one. If any point in that process goes wrong, you can end up with two completely separate uteri and two different cervixes, even sometimes two different vaginas, or you can end up with like a partial septum, a bicornuate uterus, an arcuate or heart-shaped uterus, all manner of different levels of it failing to completely combine. The reason the kidneys come into play here is because embryologically, the kidneys and the uterus develop at the same time. So when this process of coming together and forming one goes awry, it often goes awry in the same way in the kidneys. So you can either have a malformed kidney because the kidneys grow like up into two and you can have like a horseshoe kidney that's just one in the middle of your abdomen or you can have just one kidney on one side or you can have totally normal kidneys and still have a uterine didelphus. When you have a period, Sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes people start having periods, they have two uteruses and it goes fine. A lot of times the question here is, do you have periods at different times? No, hormones manage when you have your menstrual cycle and so you're bleeding at the same time. So you may not even know if you have two uteri and they're both working normally, the person may not know. It becomes problematic when one of the uteruses doesn't develop quite right and it may not have an exit. So it grows the endometrial tissue and it grows the uterine muscle. So it is responsive to the hormones that make it have cycles, but the blood has nowhere to go. So what happens is over the first few times that this person has a cycle, the blood is kind of collecting in there and that's something called a hematometria. It's just getting bigger and bigger and causing that uterine horn on whichever side it's on to dilate and that's really, really painful. If you first start having periods and you're having severe pain, or if someone is around the age that they should be having periods, they're not having periods, but they're having severe pain that comes once a month, this is a sign that we should do an abdominal ultrasound and look at the uterus to see if we can figure out what's going on. After that, they need an MRI and they need to have the kidneys evaluated as well. Interestingly, Hearing also develops around a similar time. So I typically recommend that people have a hearing test if they've never had one. Most people, by the time they get to me, have already had a hearing test and they can hear fine. But you do wanna examine the ears as well. Ears, kidney, and uterus develop around the same time in embryologic development. Oh no, I hope I don't fall. Copper IUDs can fall out just like any other IUD. And I always tell people to learn how to feel their string so that they can make sure the IUD is still in place. She actually has a follow-up video to this, which I will go ahead and watch now because I think it's gonna be a really common question. I keep getting this comment asking if it hurt. No, um, it literally just fell out. I wouldn't have even noticed it if I didn't hear it hit the ground below me. I did, I did not feel a thing. Likely what had happened is it had come out at another point. There was no blood involved there. And usually if it has just come from uterus through cervix and out, you're gonna have some blood with it. That being said, these can fall out without people knowing. And that's why it's important to be able to feel your strings. Usually what I tell people is, you're probably going to notice if it falls out, but I have seen people who didn't know. So if something changes in your periods, if you have a Mirena IUD or something and you're not having cycles and then suddenly you get your cycles back, or if you were having a sudden really heavy cycle and lots of bleeding and clots and it might've come out and you didn't know and it was lost in a clot, or if you know you just notice anything is different, just come in and let us check. It doesn't happen often. Expulsion of an IUD, especially if you've had it more than six to 12 months is really, really unusual, but you still need to be cognizant of if anything is changing, if there's any differences in your periods or your body or your symptoms, or if you can't feel your strings using a finger around the cervix. Oh. 
Oh no, we can't, I can't. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> You can do a handstand with a diva cup in and that definitely won't happen. And usually they won't leak either. They create suction around the cervix. So they're very good for people who are athletic, doing handstands, moving around. That was disgusting. All right, y'all, that's it for today. I hope that you learned something. I hope you got a laugh. Join us next time when we go through some of the worst gynecology advice that I've recently found on TikTok. If you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload and I will see you next Monday.